What is class A airspace? Generally, it's the airspace from 18,000 feet MSL up to and including FL 600, including that airspace overlying the waters within 12 nautical miles of the coast of the 48 continuous states and Alaska. <clears throat> and designated international airspace beyond 12 nautical miles of the coast of the 48 contiguous states and Alaska within areas of domestic radio navigation signal, or ATC radar coverage, and within which domestic procedures are applied. Can a flight under VFR be conducted with Class A airspace? No, unless otherwise authorized by ATC, each person must operate an aircraft in Class A airspace, must operate that aircraft under instrument flight rules. 101. <clears throat> what is the minimum pilot certification for operations conducted within Class A airspace? A pilot must be at least a private pilot with an instrument rating. 102. What minimum equipment is required for flight operations within Class A airspace? A two-way radio capable of communicating with ATC on the frequency assigned, a mode C altitude encoding transponder, equipped with instruments and equipment required for IFR operations. 103. How is Class A airspace depicted on navigational charts? Class A airspace is not specifically charted. 104. What is the definition of Class B airspace? Generally, it's the airspace from the surface to 10,000 feet surrounding the nation's busiest airports <clears throat> in terms of IFR operations or passenger enplanements. The configuration of each Class B airspace area is individually tailored and consists of a surface area and two or more layers. Some Class B airspace areas resemble upside-down wedding cakes and is designed to contain all published instrument procedures once an aircraft enters the airspace. 105. What minimum pilot certification is required to operate an aircraft within Class B airspace? No person may take off or land a civil aircraft at an airport within a Class B airspace area or operate a civil aircraft within a Class B airspace area unless A. The pilot in command holds at least a private pilot certificate. B. The pilot in command holds a recreational pilot certificate and has met the requirements of 16.101. Or for a student pilot seeking a recreational pilot certificate met the requirements of 61.94. C, the pilot in commands holds a sport pilot certificate and has met the requirements of 61.325 or the requirements for a student pilot seeking a recreational pilot certificate. <clears throat> D, the aircraft is operated by a student pilot who has met the requirements of 6194 or 6195. Certain Class B airspace areas do not allow pilot operations to be conducted to or from the primary airport unless the pilot in command holds at least a private pilot certificate, examples Dallas-Fort Worth. <clears throat> 106. What is the minimum equipment requirement for operations of an aircraft within Class B airspace? An operable two-way radio capable of communications with ATC on the appropriate frequencies for that area. B, a mode C altitude encoding transponder. C, if IFR, an operable VOR or TACAN receiver or an operable and suitable RNAV system. <coughs> Question 107. <clears throat> Before operating an aircraft into Class B airspace, what basic requirement must be met? 
Arriving aircraft must obtain an ATC clearance from the ATC facility having jurisdiction for that area prior to operating an aircraft in that area. <clears throat> 108. What minimum weather conditions are required when conducting VFR flight operations within Class B airspace? VFR flight operations must be conducted clear of clouds with at least three statute miles of visibility. 109. How is Class B airspace depicted on navigational charts? Class B airspace is charted on sectional charts, IFR and route low altitude, and terminal area charts. A solid shaded blue line depicts the lateral limits of Class Bravo airspace. Numbers indicate the base and the top, for example, 100 over 25 or 100 over surface. <clears throat> 110. What basic ATC surface services are provided to all aircraft operating within Class B airspace? VFR pilots will be provided sequencing and separation from other aircraft while operating within Class B airspace. <clears throat> 111. It becomes apparent that weight turbulence may be encountered while ATC is providing sequencing and separation services in Class Bravo airspace. Whose responsibility is it to avoid this turbulence? The pilot in command is responsible. The services provided by ATC do not relieve pilots of their responsibilities to see and avoid other traffic operating in basic VFR weather conditions to adjust their operations and flight path as necessary to preclude serious wake turbulence encounters, to maintain appropriate terrain and obstruction clearance, or to remain in weather conditions equal to or better than the minimums required by Part 91-155. <clears throat> Question 112. What is the maximum speed allowed when operating inside Class Bravo airspace under 10,000 feet and within Class Delta surface area. Unless otherwise authorized or required by ATC, no person may operate an aircraft at or below 2,500 feet above the surface within four nautical miles of the primary airport of a Class C, Charlie, or Class D, Delta airspace area at an indicated airspeed of more than 200 knots. This restriction does not apply to operations conducted within a Class Bravo airspace area. Such operations shall comply with the below 10,000 feet MSL restriction. No person shall operate an aircraft below 10,000 feet MSL at an indicated airspeed of more than 250 knots. 113. <coughs> when operating beneath the lateral limits of Class Bravo airspace, or in a VFR corridor designated through Class Bravo airspace, what maximum speed is authorized? No person may operate an aircraft in the airspace underlying Class Bravo airspace area designated for an airport or in a VFR corridor designated through such a Class Bravo airspace area at an indicated airspeed of more than 200 knots. I should have really just said 200 knots. <clears throat> 114. What is Class Charlie airspace? It is surface to 4,000 feet surrounding those areas that have an operational control tower and are serviced with radar approach control and have a certain number of IFR operations or passenger enplanements. 115, what are the basic dimensions of Class Charlie airspace? Usually consists of five nautical mile radius core surface area that extends, excuse me, from the surface up to 4,000 feet above the airport elevation and a 10 nautical mile radius shelf area that extends from 1,200 feet to 4,000 feet above the airport elevation. The outer area radius will be 20 nautical miles with some variations based on specific requirements. 
The outer area extends outward from the primary airport and extends from the lower limits of radar coverage up to the ceiling of the approach controls airspace. Number 116. <clears throat> what minimum pilot certification is required to operate an aircraft within Class Charlie airspace? A student pilot certificate. 117. What minimum equipment is required to operate an aircraft within Class Charlie airspace? Unless otherwise authorized by the ATC having jurisdiction over Class Charlie, you must have a two-way radio, automatic pressure altitude reporting equipment with mode C capability. 118. When operating an aircraft through Class Charlie airspace or to an airport within Class Charlie airspace, what basic requirement must be met? <clears throat> Each person must establish two-way radio communications with air traffic control. 119. Two-way radio communications must be established prior to entering Class Charlie airspace. Define what is meant by established in this context. If a controller responds to a radio call with aircraft call sign standby, radio communication has been established. It is important to understand that if the controller responds to the initial radio call without using the aircraft identification, radio communications have not been established and the pilot may not enter Class Charlie airspace. <clears throat> 120. When departing a satellite airport without an operative control tower located within Class Charlie airspace, what requirements must be met? Each person must establish and maintain two-way radio communications with air traffic control facilities over Class Charlie airspace as soon as practicable after departing. 121. What minimum weather conditions are required when conducting VFR flight operations within Class Charlie airspace? VFR flight operations within Class Charlie airspace require three statue miles flight visibility and cloud clearances of at least 500 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and 2,000 feet horizontal to clouds. How is Class Charlie airspace depicted on navigational charts? A solid magenta line is used to depict Class Charlie airspace. Class Charlie airspace is charted on sectional charts, IFR and route low altitude, and terminal area charts when appropriate. 123. What type of air traffic control services are provided when operating within Class Charlie airspace? When two-way radio communication and radar contact are established, all VFR aircraft are sequenced to the primary airport, provided Class Charlie services within the Class Charlie airspace and outer area, and provided basic radar services beyond the outer area on a workload permitting basis. This can be terminated by the controller if workload di dictates. 124. Describe the various types of terminal radar service available for VFR aircraft. <clears throat> Basic radar service are safety alerts, traffic advisories, limited radar vectoring, on a workload permitting basics, and sequencing at locations where procedures have been established for this purpose and or when covered by a letter of agreement. TRSA service is a radar sequencing and separation service for VFR aircraft in a TRSA. Class C service provides basic radar service, approved separation between IFR and VFR aircraft, and sequencing of VFR arrivals to the primary airport. Class Bravo service provides, in addition to basic radar service, approved separation of aircraft based on IFR, VFR, and or weight and sequencing of VFR arrivals to the primary airports. Number 125. Where is Mode C altitude encoding transponder equipment required? 
A, at or above 10,000 feet MSL over the 48 continuous states or the District of Columbia, excluding that airspace below 2,500 feet AGL. B, within 30 miles of a Class Bravo airspace primary airport below 10,000 feet MSL. C, within and above all class Charlie airspace up to 10,000 feet MSL. D, within 10 miles of certain designated airports, excluding that airspace, which is both outside class Delta surface area and below 1,200 feet AGL. E, all aircraft flying into, within, or across the continuous U.S. ATIS. Civil and military transponders should be turned to the on or normal altitude reporting position prior to moving on the airport surface to ensure the aircraft is visible to ATC surveillance systems. Number 126. What is the maximum speed of an aircraft that may be operated within Class Charlie airspace? At or below 2,500 feet above the surface within four nautical miles of the primary airport of a class Charlie airspace, no more than 230 knots, excuse me, 200 knots, which is 230 miles per hour. 127, what is class Delta airspace? Class Delta generally extends upward from the surface to 2,500 feet. Above the airport elevation surrounding these airports, they'll have an operational control tower. 128. When operating an aircraft through Class Delta airspace or to an airport within Class Delta airspace, what requirement must be met? Each person must establish <clears throat> two-way radio communications with the ATC facilities. 129. When departing a satellite airport within an operative control tower located within Class Delta airspace, what requirements must be met? Each person must establish and maintain two-way radio communications. 130. Is an ATC clearance required if flight operations are conducted through a Class E surface area arrival extension. Class E airspace may be designated as extensions to Class Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo surface areas. Class Echo airspace exten extensions begin at the surface and extend up to the overlying control airspace. The extensions provide controlled airspace to contain standard instrument approach procedures without imposing a communication requirement on pilots operating under VFR. Surface area arrival extensions become part of the surface area and are in effect during the same times as the surface area. 131. What minimum weather conditions are required when conducting VFR flight operations within Class Delta airspace. VFR flight operations within Class Delta airspace require three statute miles flight visibility and cloud clearances of at least 500 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and 2,000 feet horizontal. <clears throat> How is Class Delta airspace depicted on navigational charts? Class Delta airspace are depicted on sectional and navigational charts with a blue segmented line and on IFR and route lows with a boxed D. 133. What type of air traffic control services are provided when operating within Class Delta airspace? No separation services are provided to VFR aircraft when meteorological conditions permit, regardless of the type of flight plan or whether or not under the control of a radar facility, the pilot is responsible to see and avoid other traffic, terrain, or obstacles, 
A controller on a workload permitted basis will provide radar traffic information, safety alerts, and traffic information for sequencing purposes. 134. What is the maximum speed an aircraft may be operated within Class Delta airspace? At or below 2,500 feet within four nautical miles, no more than 200 knots or 230 miles per hour. 135. When a control tower located at an airport within Class Delta airspace ceases operation for the day, what happens to the lower limit of the controlled airspace? During the hours the tower is not in operation, Class Echo surface area rules, or a combination of Class Echo, rules down to 700 feet, AGL, and Class Golf rules to the surface will become applicable. Check the chart supplement in the U.S. for specifics. Number 136. Will all airports with an operating control tower always have Klaus Class Delta airspace surrounding them? No, some airports do not have the required weather reporting capability necessary for surface-based controlled airspace. The controlled airspace over these airports normally begins at 700 feet or 1200 feet AGL and can be determined from visual aeronautical charts. Number 137. What is the definition of Class Echo controlled airspace? Controlled airspace <clears throat> is airspace of defined dimensions within which air traffic control service is provided to IFR flights and to VFR flights in accordance with the airspace classification. Controlled airspace is a generic term that covers class Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Del excuse me, Delta, and Echo airspace. Question 138. State several examples of class Echo airspace. Answer A. <clears throat> the surface area designated for an airport where a control tower is not in operation. Class Echo surface area extends upward from the surface to a designated altitude or to the adjacent or overlying controlled airspace and are configured to contain all instrument procedures. Second, the extension to a surface area. Class Echo airspace may be designated as extensions to Class Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo surface areas. Class Echo airspace extensions begin at the surface and extend up to the overlying controlled airspace. The extensions provide controlled airspace to contain standard instrument approach procedures without imposing a communications requirement on pilots operating under VFR. Third, airspace used for transition. Class Echo airspace areas may be designated for transitioning aircraft to and from the terminal or en route environment. They extend upward from either 700 feet AGL or 1200 feet AGL and are designated for airports with an approved instrument procedure. The 700 foot or 1200 foot AGL Class Echo airspace transition areas remain in effect continuously regardless of airport hours or surface area status. <clears throat> Next is en route domestic areas. Class Echo airspace areas that extend upward from a specified altitude and provide controlled airspace in those areas where there is a requirement to provide IFR en route ATC services, but the federal airway system is inadequate. Next is a federal airways and low altitude RNAV routes. Federal airways and low altitude RNAV routes are class echo airspace areas and unless otherwise specified, extend upward from 1200 feet AGL but not included to 18,000 feet MSL. Next is offshore airspace areas. Class Echo airspace extends upward 
from a specific altitude, but not including 18,000 MSL. These areas provide controlled airspace beyond 12 miles from the coast of the U.S. In those areas where there is a requirement to provide IFR and route ATC services, and within which the U.S. is applying domestic procedures. Next, unless designated at a lower altitude, Class Echo airspace in the U.S. consists of the airspace extending upward from 14,500 feet MSL, but not including 18,000 feet MSL, overlying the 48 continuous states, District of Columbia, Alaska, including the waters within 12 nautical miles from the coast of the 48 states and Alaska. And finally, the airspace above FL 600 is Class Echo airspace. 139. What are the operating rules and pilot equipment requirements to operate within Class Echo airspace? Minimum pilot certificate or student pilot certificate, no special equipment requirements, and no requirements for arrival or through flight in Class Echo airspace. Number 140. <clears throat> when a Class Charlie or Class Delta surface area is not in effect continuously, for example, where a control tower only operates part-time, what will happen to the surface of the area airspace when the tower closes? The surface area airspace will change to either a Class Echo surface area or Class Golf airspace. In such cases, the airspace entry for the airport will state the other times it's Class Echo or other times it's Class Golf. When a part-time surface area changes to Class Echo airspace, the Class Echo arrival extensions will remain in effect as Class Echo airspace. If a part-time Class Charlie, Delta, or Echo surface area becomes Class Golf airspace, the arrival extensions will change to Class Golf at the same time. 141. Explain the purpose of Class Echo transition areas. Class Echo transition areas extend upward from either 700 feet AGL, a magenta vignette, or 1,200 feet AGL, a blue vignette, and are designed for airports with an approved instrument procedure. Class Echo transition areas exist to help separate via cloud clearance, arriving and departing IFR traffic from VFR aircraft operating in the vicinity. Number 142, are you required to establish communication with a tower located within Class Echo airspace? Yes, unless otherwise authorized or required by ATC, no person may operate an, air an aircraft to, from, or through, or on an airport having an operational control tower unless two-way communications are maintained between that aircraft and the control tower. Communications must be established prior to four nautical miles from the airport up to and including 2,500 feet AGL. 143. How is Class Echo airspace depicted on navigational charts? Class Echo airspace below 14,500 and up to 18,000 feet are narrow bands. They're kind of shaded. They're like a magenta shaded band. Floors other than 700 feet that go next to uncontrolled airspace are defined by blue shaded bands. Different floors greater than 700 feet AGL are annotated by a symbol and a number indicating the floor. If the symbol is less than 18,000 feet MSL, the value prefixed by the word ceiling is shown along the limits of the controlled airspace. 144. How are Class Echo service extension areas depicted on navigational charts? Class Echo airspace areas that serve as extensions to Class Bravo Charlie and Delta airspace are depicted by a magenta segmented line. 
What is the definition of class golf airspace? Class golf, or uncontrolled airspace, is that portion of the airspace that has not been designated Alpha, Bravo, Delta, or Echo. It is airspace in which aircraft, air traffic control has no authority or responsibility to control the air traffic. However, pilots should remember that there are VFR minimums that apply to this airspace. Are you required to establish communications with a tower located in class golf airspace? Yes, unless otherwise authorized or required by ATC, you must have two-way communication. And it must be established prior to four nautical miles from the airport up to, into, up to and including 2,500 feet AGL. 147. What are the vertical limits of class golf airspace? Surface continues up to the overlying controlled class echo airspace, but not to exceed 14,500 feet. 148. What is the minimum cloud clearance and visibility required when conducting flight operations in a traffic pattern at night in class golf airspace below 1,200 feet AGL? When the visibility is less than three statute miles, but not less than one statute mile during night hours, an airplane may be operated clear of clouds if operated in an airport traffic pattern within one half mile of the runway. 149. <clears throat> what is the main difference between class golf airspace and Alpha Bravo Delta Echo? The main difference which distinguishes class golf airspace from Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo is the flight visibility cloud clearance requirements necessary to operate in it. Which begs the question, what minimum flight visibility and clearance from clouds are required for VFR flight in the following situations? Class C, D, or E airspace less than 10,000 feet MSL, visibility three statute miles, cloud clearance 152. D is at or above 10,000 feet, visibility five statute miles, cloud clearance 1,000 below, 1,000 above, and one statute mile horizontal. Class G airspace, 1,200 feet or less above the surface during the day, one statute mile clear of clouds. During the night, three statute miles, 152. More than 1,200 feet above the surface, but less than 10,000 feet below. During the day, For Echo, one statute mile, cloud clearance 152. At night, three statute miles, cloud clearance 152. Visibility, five statute miles. That was confusing. It's better to just write it down. <laughs>